Thank you for watching this summary of what occurred at the March 28th, 2023 Transportation Safety Technical Advisors meeting. The purpose of the TSTA meeting number two was to identify the priority safety challenges to address in the Comprehensive Safety Action Plan, or CSAP, and initiate a discussion on solutions. The agenda for the meeting included the following. A welcome and introductions, safety communications, benchmarking priority actions, problem identification, safety prioritization, and initial solutioning, and marking up the map exercise. So why is transportation safety so important? This slide shows pictures of places and people in Wichita. With transportation safety, it is easy to look at crash numbers to identify challenges. But it's important to remember that these are people, people with families and friends, play an important role in someone's life. Because of this, the Wichita region supports the goal of zero transportation fatalities. So all people who live in, work in, or visit the region make it where they're going and back home at the end of the day. A key feature of the CSAP is a communications calendar. It outlines safety outreach methods to be conducted over the course of the plan. The goal of the calendar is to have all partners share the same information at the same time to increase the reach of critical safety education. Recent communication efforts included the Be Safe Wichita video, which was viewed 180 times on YouTube, 13 times on Twitter, and 921 times on Facebook, and a cultural survey, which received 179 survey responses. Upcoming communication efforts include the following and will be shared with the TSTA members to cross post. The, this PowerPoint and highlights, uh, the emphasis areas announcements, and distracted driving messaging. For WAMPO's safety program to be successful and move the needle on severe crashes, different topics need to be discussed, assessed, and solutions integrated into planning and programming. Six key areas were shared with stakeholders at TSTA meeting number one, including culture, which means safety needs to be a priority for the traveling public at transportation agencies and in our individual job responsibilities. Leadership and commitment, which is leaders need to be brought in and supportive of safety efforts. Planning. Plans need to be developed using inputs and considerations of transportation safety. Data analysis. Crash and other data need to be available and utilized to make informed decisions. Project delivery. Projects should be executed with safety policies and countermeasures in mind. Safe system framework. The safe system approach should be used as a tool to guide decision making. For each of the six topics, a list of challenges and suggested solutions, 42, were identified. The full list can be found in the meeting summary number one. At TSTA meeting number two, participants prioritized a 42 solution to determine the highest priorities to carry forward in the CSAP. A one indicated a low priority and a five indicated a high priority. The, those highlighted in blue were identified as the highest priorities. The next six slides show the prioritization results. For culture solutions and priorities, the two that are Highlighted in blue are include transportation safety as an explicit part of the vision for all municipalities in the region, and WAMPO shares and provides education on the final CSAP with local agencies, advocacy organizations, and WAMPO committees. None of the two that were listed under leadership solutions of priorities were selected. Three were selected under the planning solutions and priorities. They are identify and build relationships with community-based organizations and work with them to reach a wider audience, share and educate local agencies on existing safety policies, guidelines, and standards, and ensure CSAP recommendations consider all potential funding sources. For data solutions and priorities, there are three. Update high crash locations at a minimum of every five years. Update high risk locations at a minimum of every five years. Continue to map and provide resources every few years to local agencies on high crash and high risk locations. For the project delivery solutions and priorities, there were three. Provide education materials to the public about specific safety measures being implemented, such as how to use it, the data behind it, and the reason for it. Provide resources to local agencies on high value and effective safety countermeasures. And continue conversations on how to integrate low cost safety improvements into maintenance projects. 
For the SAFE system framework solutions and priorities, only one was highlighted, and it is develop a communications and education document defining basic rules of the road for pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers. Next, we'll look at the safety story, public input and analysis. A public survey was administered and 179 responses were received. This slide shows that people feel safe when driving themselves. They feel other motorists are somewhat unsafe. This slide shows that respondents feel safe when walking, but think other pedestrians are somewhat unsafe. This slide shows that respondents generally do not feel safe biking. This slide shows that respondents disagree that existing accommodations for pedestrian and bicycle riders are safe and that drivers tend to travel at unsafe speeds. This slide shows that respondents do not think there is appropriate traffic safety information provided. This slide shows that respondents are split on whether there is sufficient law enforcement with half agreeing and half disagreeing. This slide shows that respondents do not think safety improvements are distributed equitably across the region. This slide shows that respondents want more investments in intersection improvements and bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. This slide shows where respondents identified safety concerns with many being intersection related. The key along the bottom shows what concern is being indicated by the color of the dot. So green is distracted driving, purple is driving under the influence, blue is lack of bicycle accommodations, brown is lack of pedestrian accommodations, yellow is speed concerns, that dark blue is unsafe crossing, teal is unsafe intersection slash street segment, and then the others are the pink and the red. 18 respondents wrote out comments. The slide shows the ones related to engineering related issues and needs. And the comment up in the corner says, the metro area is lacking infrastructure for pedestrian and bicycle safety. Protected bicycle lanes and pedestrian safety should be prioritized. This slide shows the comments that were written related to education enforcement issues and needs. This slide shows the ones related to miscellaneous issues and needs. Next, we looked at the crash data. This is from 10 years worth of data from 2012 to 2022, supplied from KDOT, and this is for the entire Wampo region, which is all of Sedgwick County, as well as portions of Butler and Sumner counties. That pinkish color that says PDO means property damage only. And then we have fatal crashes, injury crashes, and then serious injury crashes. This table shows the crashes by jurisdiction. It ha has the all crashes, the non-state system, and then the state system by jurisdiction. These tables indicate the crash types for the Wampo area. This table shows the crash types by EPVO. This slide shows the crash types by jurisdictions. And across the top in that bright green, the headers are other motor vehicle crashes, fixed object crashes, parked vehicle crashes, overturned vehicle crashes, pedestrian vehicle crashes, bike vehicle crashes, and train vehicle crashes. This is a crash tree showing how the crashes break down. So if you, the top one says total collision with other vehicle, fatal and serious injury, 1,052. And then 847 of those were on the locally maintained area, which then 734 were on the city. And you just keep going down, diving into the different characteristics. This table shows the fixed object collisions by the time of day, and then the types of fixed object collisions. The majority of the fixed object collisions are trees and it looks like utility devices. Next, we have two slides with maps that show crashes. So we have the fixed object fatal or serious injury crash map, and then the drunk slash drug use crash map. Next, we have a map showing the environmental justice areas with the fatal and serious injuries as a heat map. The environmental justice areas are shown with that pink color, and those are areas that have a higher concentration of minorities or of people living in poverty. And then we have the heat map on top of those. Next, we have emphasis areas, and this is showing all crashes. The bar charts show different things. So the very first one says intersection related. And the purple color is serious injury crashes. Then the kind of 
blue green, I guess, is injury crashes. And then the green is uh, property damage only crashes. Now also that dark blue is fatal crashes. And that's very tiny on the intersection related, so you can barely see it. But then when we look at the emphasis area, fatal and serious injuries, it becomes a lot clearer. Specifically, the intersection related crashes have a lot of serious injuries shown in the pinkish color. And then the dark blue color are the fatal crashes. This table shows the emphasis areas with overlaps. So if you look at the top one where it says step one, and then you go down and across. So looking at, let's say intersection related and roadway departure related, that's 8.4% of crashes. The ones that are a reddish color are ones that are higher. So alcohol or drug related and roadway departure uh, equals 50.9%. And if we look at vulnerable road users and intersection related, that's 56.7%. This slide just shows those two charts together so you can really evaluate uh, what they mean. So intersection related, and then when you go across, uh, let's say we go to step two and we look at intersection related, and then we go across, there's a, a lot of red there. So vulnerable road user related, speed related, distracted driver related, understrained op occupant related, work zone related, motorcycle related, now we're going to take a look at what the emphasis area priorities were for the members of the TSTA at this meeting. Based on the results of the Wampo region crash trend analysis, 10 safety issues emerged as potential priorities to address. TSTA members prioritized the top three areas to address in the CSAM by using sticky dots at the meeting. And these included intersections, speed, and vulnerable road users. Next, we looked at safety countermeasures. For the CSEP, other regional and local transportation and safety plans were reviewed. Those documents identified several solutions to address the road safety and road user safety. All these solutions were presented to the TSTA members so they could identify those that have been or have the most potential to be effective at reducing severe crashes in the region. The following slides show which solutions participants want to continue to see implemented moving forward. They are highlighted in blue. Effective measures are bolded, but not all were selected as treatments to use in the region moving forward. These are the countermeasures for safe roads and speeds that were prioritized by the participants of the TSTA. And here are a few more safe roads and speeds countermeasures that were prioritized. And yet a few more safe roads and speeds countermeasures. And again, more safe roads and speeds countermeasures. And the last slide of safe roads and speeds countermeasures. This slide and the following two slides show the countermeasures for safe road users. For the NHTSA ones, we only highlighted the education enforcement solutions that have four or five stars, nothing lower. This is the second slide of countermeasures for safe road users. And this is the last slide for countermeasures for safe road users. Next, participants marked up the maps. Participants were given instructions for marking up the maps. They were asked to use specific colors to indicate specific things. So red was to indicate the accuracy of crash locations, blue, other challenging locations, green, near miss locations, orange, development and growth pressure points, and purple, other concerns. These are shown in the following maps. You can also find these in the meeting summary that's posted on the safety website, which is wampo.org safety. The following several slides show maps that were available to participants to mark up. This first slide is of the Northwest region and there were no comments. This map shows the Northeast quadrant of our region. And some of the comments include the pathway crossing K96, businesses on lots of sides of the road on North Rock, and makes it unsafe for vulnerable road users, high speeds on web, and the intersection of web and K96. This map is showing the southwest area of our region, and it is zoomed the comments. And there's one comment on West 21st Street 
saying that there's a concern to area residents. The map showing the southeast area of our region has so many comments in it that I split it into two slides and they're zoomed to the comments so you can more easily see them. And as you can see, there are a ton of comments. There are a lot regarding pedestrians and speeds. This is the second southeast map that has been zoomed to the comments. The comments are mainly about economic development and areas developing. The next steps in the project will be to communicate with the public on CSEP progress and outcomes to date. We'll be having another TSTA meeting in May and a open house transportation safety committee meeting in June. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Please check out wampo.org safety to learn more about the project or find the meeting summary.